A couple of words that has been in my vocabulary much more than before is Zoom and hunkering down. I like to talk about the second one, hunkering down, because that, in a sense, is what Jesus' disciples were originally doing. In the Gospel reading, they had been hunkering down in the upper room. They were there for the Last Supper, and even afterwards they stayed there until Pentecost because they were frightened. We heard Jesus speaking to them in the upper room at the Last Supper when he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. And then he goes on to say, in my Father's house there are many dwellings. Now that particular passage is often done at funerals and people here say, oh yeah, because the person I've come to to mourn is in the new dwelling place with God in heaven. But actually, that's not what Jesus is talking about in that particular reading. He's not talking about a dwelling place up there. He's talking about a dwelling place here. And when you see as he continues, he is saying that I will continue to be with you even though I am going away. Now, the next day he died, and it did go away, but in a sense, he came back. He was with them even after his resurrection, and we've heard a lot of these readings where they focused on the presence of the risen Christ. But he's speaking even beyond that. He is saying, I am going to be present in a much deeper way. My Father's dwelling place is for you. And it will be there because I will be with you. Not that caused a lot of concern. What are you talking about? Well, it took a long time for the disciples of Jesus to really reflect on what that was telling them. So much so that when John's gospel was written, this is much, much later than when it actually occurred. And as he wrote it, Jesus' presence, his dwelling place, it began to sink on them that Jesus was present even now. And that's why we see this dialogue going along when Jesus is saying, the Father is in me and I am in the Father. That's one of the way of the dwelling places. The Father in Jesus and Jesus in the Father. The Spirit coming alive, there's another dwelling place. And that's where it speaks to us. As it spoke to that community when John wrote his gospel, who were in a sense undergoing tremendous persecution, Rejection, isolation, and then they listen to those words of Jesus, I am with you. And when he was questioned about, what do you mean? How can that be? And he says, because I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the way to the Father. That word Father is so central to this because remember that when Jesus was praying, the word he used was Abba. By doing so, he showed an intimacy with God that didn't exist before or they didn't realize it. And so when he says that if you see me, you see the Father, the Father and I are one. All of a sudden, we are called into a much closer relationship with God than we realize because Jesus came among us. So when he says, I am the way, the way to the Father, it's encountering and following Jesus. When when he says, I am the truth, 
He is the Word become flesh who lived among us. So if we want to follow and know what is God's will, what is God's way, then we follow the life of Jesus. And then when he says, I am the life, he says, I came to bring life and bring it more abundantly. So that brings us back to what we're experiencing right now, our hunkering down mode. Where do we find Jesus? Not up there. He is here among us. Where do we find the priest? Well, you might see the three of us can celebrate around the altar. But St. Peter reminds us that you are priests. That through baptism, and that's what one Peter was, it was a baptismal homily, he says you are a priestly people, a holy people. Church exists through you. You may be watching us from afar, but those few of you who are around watch view, viewing us here at your home, you are the domestic church. You are the people of God, and God exists in and through you. That's why we can come with confidence, even at dire times, knowing that we are not alone, knowing that God has not abandoned us, that God is indeed with us. When he makes that statement at the end of 2 Peter that you are a priestly people, a holy people, he didn't stop there. Because he reminds us that your role as a people is not just saying, I'm a holy people. It is, I'm called to evangelize. I'm called to spread the news about Jesus, to make him alive and present. It doesn't start here in this building. It starts in your home in your families, supporting one another, praying, sharing the good news with one another. And this way we follow him who is the way, the truth, and the life. And through that, we have experienced that holy dwelling place, not above, but right in our midst.